Hello and welcome to the Old Flyers. The coast of Western Australia is far from Germany and Japan, yet in World War II, Axis ships and submarines posed a threat to shipping there. For instance, in 1941, 106 miles off Dirk Hartog Island, the German raider Cormoran and HMAS Sydney met and destroyed each other. In 1943, the Japanese submarine 165 made it as far south as Port Gregory. Did they know that further south in the Port of Fremantle was one of the largest American submarine bases? Allied ships sailing to Europe and the Pacific with troops and goods were vulnerable. Australian aircraft were sent to patrol these maritime approaches as far out as their endurance would allow. Maritime patrol aircraft included Avro Ansons, Bristol Beauforts, Consolidated PBY Catalinas and Lockheed Hudsons. It was on the 9th of September 1943 that an A9-317 Beaufort bomber aircraft took off into the afternoon sky from the RAAF base in Bussardon with five people on board, the aircraft were scheduled to patrol for enemy ships from near Bussardon, north to Rottnest Island, then land at Pierce RAAF base by 4.30pm that day. It never arrived and its whereabouts remain shrouded in mystery to this day. The people on board included Flying Officers Arthur Aitken and Cedric Richards, Army Captain Harry Kolbig, and Flight Sergeants Alexander Emerson and 21-year-old Peter Hasty. An air and sea search quickly commenced after no contact could be made with the Beaufort bomber. Researcher Pamela Harrison said the bomber was last seen by a vessel 45 nautical miles off the southern coast. The captain was interrogated and said the plane was flying normally and had no signs of any problems Mrs. Harrison said. The aircraft acknowledged him and went on its way. It was the last time it was seen. Two days after the bomber went missing, an aircraft spotted a yellow rubber dinghy off the southwest coast of WA. Alas, it was empty. Peter Hastie's niece, Priscilla Smith, was born a decade after he disappeared and still remembers when her mum first told her about her uncle's story. She said the family was devastated by his disappearance. I suppose the family always hoped that they would hear something further about it, that someone would hear or see something, but I don't think they ever did, Mrs Smith said. Researcher Pamela Harrison said, Beaufort bombers were nicknamed flying coffins with more than 90 aircraft known to have crashed before the 1943 event, yet the Beaufort bombers were permitted to fly. That is until one year later when another incident grounded all of these remaining aircraft. It was on the 6th of January 1944 that Wing Commander Charles Learmonth led a formation of three No. 14 Squadron Bristol Beauforts on an exercise off Rottnest Island with ships of the US Navy. At a height of 1,000 feet and about 18 miles northwest of Rottnest Island, his Beaufort began to shake violently. The Australian-built Beauforts were plagued by a mysterious problem that had destroyed over 90 aircraft and killed many crews, including many under training at RAAF East Sale. Learmonth recognised that the violent shaking was driven by the tail of his aircraft and he called Flight Lieutenant Ken Hewitt, the pilot of one of the other Beauforts, to fly in close and observe his tail. Hewitt could see the control rod to the elevator trim tab on Learmonth's Beaufort hanging down. It had separated from the tab, allowing the tab and elevator to oscillate and drive the violent shaking of the whole aircraft. Learmonth used his radio to advise the crews of the other two Beauforts what he was observing. Shortly after, the trim tab flicked to the extreme up position, overpowering Learmonth and forcing the aircraft to descend rapidly. After less than a minute, Learmonth's Beaufort crashed into the sea 
killing Learmont and his three crew members. The wireless operator on one of the other Beauforts reported sighting a parachute on the surface of the water. With the information obtained from Learmont's radio commentary, the problem plaguing the Australian-built Beauforts was traced to a component in the elevator trim tab actuating unit. All the RWF Beauforts were grounded until they were modified to eliminate the problem. Learmont is credited with supplying the vital information that was necessary to identify the problem and eventually solve it. A secret World War II landing field at Exmouth Gulf, Western Australia, known only by codename Potshot, was eventually developed into a permanent military base and named RWF Learmont in honour of Wing Commander Charles Learmont. Thank you for watching. Liking and subscribing would be appreciated. Even better, support our channel with a donation.